And this is our city news. A well-known Fitchburg artist makes an appearance at a local exhibition. A lasting piece of history will be brought back to the city. And FSU is back in full swing with move-in day. All this and lots more coming up next on our city news. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Ellison and the entire Our City News team. Fitchburg State is back in full swing as students move in and start the new year. The bustle of activity is welcome here as everyone's settled in. Our City News correspondent, May Reed Dandino, caught up with some of the students on this exciting day. May Reed? Hello, my name is Mary Dandino for Our City News, and I am here at Fitchburg State University in the Hammond Building as students are moving in for their first day of school here. So we are going to show you around a little bit, interview a few students, and hopefully get some tips and advice on how to make your move-in day as great as it can be. I believe you moved in this morning, right, Daniel? Yes, yeah, yes I did. I moved in at 9 a.m. today. Mm -hmm. And how did you make a smooth transition? Um, I decided to show up very early. Um, I was one of the first people to get checked in, so I was able to just go in, get out, get a bin. And I was able to get my friends to help me move stuff in, and I got packed. Now I'm here. What is one thing you missed about campus over the summer? Um, the biggest thing I missed was just being surrounded by friends all the time. Whether you're walking to class or in your dorm, there's always someone to say hi to. And this campus is relatively small, so you always see someone you know, which I think is great. So definitely being able to see everybody like on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is Mike. So Mike was a commuter last year, correct? That is right, yeah. And this year he's starting things on campus. Uh, what do you think you look forward to the most about campus life? Well, uh, I remember last year that I was just really happy with uh, being able to have a family even though I didn't live on campus, but I still felt detached from everybody and all those relationships I was making. So I'm really excited to be able to live on campus and be able to really be with those new people in that family and be able to like start my new life. Once again, my name is Mary Dandino with Our City News. Back to the newsroom. We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. Some people rock and some people roll. Some will make a gig or ride down to your soul. She'll talk to the world and introduce them to you. And look at me now, I'm all Barbara and you. You gotta take a step inside the shoes of another. Get to know your neighbor, get to know one another. She'll talk to the world and introduce them to you. And look at me now, I'm all Barbara and you. You're watching Our City News on FATV.
A lasting piece of history will leave its mark for a long time with the renovation and restoration of the cannon in Monument Square. Mayor Stephen Di Natale had more to say. Noticing the footings in Monument Park with nothing there, and I, of course we knew the cannons were there at one time, they were now being housed in uh, the DPW uh, garage uh, because of the deterioration in the wood. Uh, it was uh, suggested that we keep them out of the weather. But last, um, I think it might have been Memorial Day, I asked them to be returned to Monument Park. And in so doing, we discovered some of the deterioration. Some of the spokes on the, uh, on the cannon wheels were uh, broken, no longer attached. Uh, so I started doing a little research, talking to some folks in... Uh, in Ashburnham, uh, George Conwell in particular, who is an expert in uh, Civil War cannon. And we got to discussing uh, how we could restore those cannon. So if we were to do them in the actual wood medium, we'd be revisiting this every so many years uh, because it just won't take the weather. We'd have to keep moving them back and forth uh, into a place where they really are not dignified. It's not a dignified space to be housing these cannons because they are a piece of our history. We researched. I had uh, Susan Christensen, who uh, works in my community development office, do some research on where we could have the cannon restored to a point where they could be in Monument Park in perpetuity. We were fortunate enough to launch a, a campaign uh, for donations, so the Crocker Foundation, the Wallace Foundation, Simon Sar and Steel, um, certain number of donors, private donors that contributed as well. Research so uh, research results, uh, also John Zarella, and uh, some other folks that uh, that were gracious enough to donate. So those cannon will be re returned, hopefully, maybe before Christmas. We're hoping, but they will. They're fabricating the aluminum now as we speak. They'll be transporting them up from Kentucky. They'll make the change with the barrel, and the carriage will be all, uh, all metal. And, but it looks like what? They will be permanently in Monument Park, no further deterioration, but in a hallowed space that they belong. FSU starts yet another year of their successful 4 plus 1 program for criminal justice. Glenn Fossa has the story. Glenn? Stephanie, the 4 plus 1 program at Fitchburg State University in the Criminal du Justice Division is well underway. This is where the student gets a four-year degree, Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice and then moves right to a one-year training that will make them a certified police officer in the Commonwealth. Uh, it's, it, is, it is a great day. We're very excited about a, a unique program that we're launching here. Uh, I think it's going to be great for the university. I think it's going to be great for the students. And I think it's going to have a big impact on the further professionalism of policing. Yes, so it was uh, a privilege and an honor to work with uh, Chief Bob DeMora. Uh, and he approached us uh, a few years back and uh, had this brainstorm this idea of, um, of incorporating police academy into an educational model. Uh, and the way he put it was, um, quite frankly, very simple. He said, we know how to do this. We have two models. When people want to be teachers, they don't show up at a school and say, hire me to be your teacher. They go to school. They go to college to get their degree. And then they get incorporated into the uh, educational milieu. Same for nurses. Nurses don't go to a hospital and say, I want to be a nurse here. They go to college first and learn how to be a nurse and do all of their practical skills and are supervised both in the university setting and in the community setting. And he said, that's our model uh, for the future for police officers. The, the importance not just of the city of Fitchburg, but actually this opens municipalities up to having talented police officers coming in that, quite frankly, these municipalities don't have to incur the cost of training them. That's all happening right here at Fitchburg State University, and we couldn't be happier. It provides us with an opportunity to increase our ranks by also keeping the taxpayer's dollar in check.
Uh, you know, to have the opportunity to hire a young police officer that is fully trained, has their master's degree, it's a win-win for that, that student officer and the community. So I'm excited about what the future brings to this program, and uh, it can only go uphill from this point. So thank you. A Fitchburg favorite gets a new facelift. We spoke with owner Dave Saluza about the new renovations to Slattery's, and he walked us through the new dining area. Access Television and thank them for the opportunity to have you come in and take a look at the renovation we've done here at Slattery's. Quite extensive. I think some people might think we just put a coat of paint on, but we really think we put together a dining room that's going to make the city proud, hopefully work well for us, and invite some new people to a restaurant and bar that's been here for an awful long time. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we did a lot of the work ourselves as far as the demolition, uh, and even prouder of the fact uh, the chairs were made uh, by M.H. Parks in Winchester, the tabletops by A.J. Crosby and Ashburn here. Uh, I had hoped that Lucy's and Fitchburg could make the moves, but they were out straight with work, but they did take the time to walk me through the process and order the moves and show me the materials of their work day at no charge, and I can't thank them enough. Pat Slattery, local architect, and our ideas on paper. He had some help with the lighting from Phil Esposito from Montachusett Construction was our local contractor. New Electric, our local uh, electrician, did our electrical work. Corrigan Floor Coverings and Gardner did the wood and the carpet that you'll see as we go forward. I uh, hope I didn't leave anybody out. Uh, Eric Short Painting, uh, my wife Donna, and some help from friends did all of the colors, the paints, and really put the lighting together. So we're excited about it. We think that we've given uh, Pittsburgh a room that's as nice as anything in town right now. A little bit hip, but certainly casual. We're keeping with advice to your customers here. So we can take a look around at the room and hope that you agree that we've done a pretty good job with it. So we can start from the outside in. We've got a really nice little dining area here. It's my favorite spot in the restaurant at this point in time. Four tables. Uh, we have music. We have out here, lighting at night, uh, and it's sometimes important to get away without having to get away. It's a good, good spot to just relax and unwind, and I find that a lot of the diners at lunchtime like it out there. So the next room that we did over before we get to the main dining room is our function room. Uh, all the furniture, as you can see, uh, the look is clean and sleek. Uh, the ceilings are done over. Uh, we had the marble floors refinished. So it's a great spot for showers and uh, after funeral receptions, business meetings. We posted all of them here. We can actually drop uh, the wood finishing blinds. On the side, there's even a smaller room that's done over in a complementary color. And uh, we're proud of the fact that I think everyone would be uh, welcome here and would like to host their small events. So the only thing I think we left intact in the dining room is the stone fireplace, which all of the people recognize, but it's all new furniture and floor coverings, and uh, Montecusa Construction crafted that barn door for my drawings, so that's almost a piece of art that we've got going on in the room, it sort of typifies the change that we brought here. Our city's own Michael Hartwell shines some light on the real estate boom right here in Fitchburg. Michael? Good news for Fitchburg. The business and housing economy is improving. More and more people are buying Fitchburg homes. But what's driving this change? Well, the realtors and home buyers I spoke to said one of the big factors is that housing prices in Fitchburg are low, but the city is close to Boston where it's expensive to live. We're talking to realtor Sandy Howe of Keller Williams about how home sales are doing in Fitchburg. Home sales are doing great. Fitchburg is 
up and coming as far as I'm concerned, and it's less expensive than the, uh, than the east, and the homes are beautiful as well. So I think it's a great market for Fitchburg, and I highly recommend it. Okay, what are the different factors that are driving up? You mentioned low prices. The prices are driving up in Fitchburg, but they still are lower than in the east, and like the, towards the Boston area. Those are going for a lot more, and you can get the same house for a lot less money here in Fitchburg. So do I have this right? People are working in Boston. It's expensive to live in Boston, mm -hmm. and people are buying Fitchburg homes and commuting? A lot of people are. They're starting to come this way, and it's a good idea. Okay, so as that demand increases for Fitchburg homes, mm -hmm. the prices will go up, but there's still some... The prices will go up. They are going up. Actually, they've gone up a lot in the past, I'm going to say, six months, a little longer, but six months to a year, they've gone quite up. And um, the houses that are selling now are probably appreciated quite a bit more than last year. So I think it's a great opportunity for anybody who wants to come and live in Fitchburg. Okay. Are there any other factors besides Boston commuters you can think of? Yes. People who need to sell their house at this time are getting a better price, so they're uh, it's a good time for the, for the seller to sell a house. Okay, and how long has this trend been going on, in your opinion? It's been going up little by little, but now I'd say within the past six to nine months. It's we'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. Join us at Great Wolf Lodge in Fitchburg on Friday, September 8th for the third annual Mission Possible fundraiser, supporting the programs at Veteran Homestead. Are you or do you know a veteran or active service member? Here's a great opportunity to give back to those who've given so much for us. Enjoy a night out for fun with family and friends, food and drinks, live and silent auction items, and more. 90% of proceeds raised go directly to support our veteran neighbors in need. To install a new heating unit in one of the homes at our Northeast Veteran Training and Rehabilitation Center. Replacing flooring at the Armistice Homestead in Lemonster. And supply furniture to our veteran support facility in Puerto Rico. Mark the date on your calendar and visit our website for complete details. Come walk the purple carpet on September 8th from 5 to 9 p.m. at Great Wolf Lodge in Fitchburg. We look forward to seeing you there. Watching Our City News on FATV. Additions like the new second commuter train station, as well as this summer's sidewalk and road improvements, as well as other infrastructure work, are bringing the city back to life. Now, Sandy, you're not just a realtor in Fitchburg, you're also a Fitchburg resident. Right. I have been one for 30 years, and uh, we. Um, had our family here and we've loved it here we've loved this neighborhood and um, I think that um, I love it here and I think it's a lot of new people coming in um, supply is, is a little bit low you know in some cases depending on what you want but um, there's still a lot out there for sale and we're getting a lot of new families in this area 
and um, I think it's great for the city. It will help um, build, build the city very nicely. Okay. Now, you mentioned that home values are increasing because of this demand. You ever think about selling your place in Fitchburg? No, not at the moment. I like it here. <laughs> um, probably in seven years or so, but right now I still like being here. Yeah, so no, not yet. Okay, anything more about how the city as a whole is impacted by this demand and the sales? Well, because the houses are going up in price and uh, people are able to sell their houses at a decent price right now, the new home buyers will have to come in and pay that, but... Um, I think that's not impacting them at all. I think that they're just still here and coming, and I think this is an upcoming city. So what will the future of Fitchburg be? This city got big as a manufacturing hub, but as technology and the economy changed, so did Fitchburg. Will the future of the city be as a self-sustaining community once again, or will it become a bedroom community for Boston? The Red Raiders take to the field tonight at Crocker Field for the first game of the season. Our own Glenn Fossa took to the field to see how setup was going. Fitchburg High School football returns to the famed Crocker Field right here downtown in our city. Over here, uh, the concession stand lost to fire, almost completed now, incredible renovation. And of course, the green grass here on the field has never looked better. Currently putting some hash marks on the visitor's side for Friday's game. Stay with us all season on Fitchburg Access Television as we bring you football at its best. This week on FATV. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Barbara and you with guests from the Greek Festival. Wednesday at 7 p.m., inside Fitchburg with guests from the Wastewater Department. Friday at 7 p.m. is Fitchburg High versus Shepherd Hill football game. And on our government channel, Monday at 7 p.m., it's the school committee meeting live. And on Tuesday at 6 p.m., it's the finance committee meeting live. For more programming, visit FATV.org. And our city news traveled to University of New Hampshire last night in Durham. And there, an exhibit with one of our very local folks, Cletia Spiro, the marketing manager at Fitchburg Art Museum. Uh, in the uh, Paul Center of Creative Arts, we were able to see many different exhibits, some of which uh, were more static and more active. In Cletia Spiro's piece, we see this uh, made masculine uh, creative art piece along with a video uh, that goes with that art piece. And then uh, in kind of an unusual exhibit downstairs at that Paul Center, uh, women's shoes in various states of, of exhibition, all at the University of Durham, uh, New Hampshire, University of New Hampshire, Durham. Uh, so we were pleased to be there, and it's just another story about how creative folks uh, who work and live in Fitchburg are. This week's episode is brought to you by KCMC Management, our local Dunkin' Donuts. If you have a story you'd like us to share, email us at rcitynewsfitchburg at gmail.com. I'm Stephanie Allison, and from everyone here at RCity News and FATV, have a wonderful day. <laughs>